struggles, the championship battle is wide open. Suzuki's Ryan Dungey has once again engineered a fast start to the season. He's got the race win here in Chase Field for Dungey. The Minnesota native has nine career race victories, but still chases the elusive Lights Championship. Through two rounds, Kawasaki's Jake Weimer has been the fastest rider on the track. Jake Weimer on his way to a huge statement. He said he wanted to make one, and he just did. He wins Anaheim one. Weimer and Dungey lead a talented field of young superstars into Anaheim. It's green flag time. Supercross lights on speed starts right now. Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FAM World Championship. It's in Angel Stadium of Anaheim, California for round three of the 2009 Supercross Lights West Coast Championship. Hi, everybody. I'm Ralph Shaheen alongside Speed's own Supercross Series champion, Jeff Emick, getting ready as we close in on the halfway point now of the Supercross Lights Championship. And Jeff coming into this round, our two reigning champs, Trey Kennard from the East, Jason Lawrence from the West, they're really struggling. Well, Trey Kennard suffered an injury last week. He will not be riding here again in the third event, but he was very strong. We look for some, you know, some serious speed out of him. Jason Lawrence, on the other hand, the reigning West Coast champion, had a devastating week in Phoenix where he did not qualify for the main event, has fallen back to points quite a bit. Let's take you back a week ago to Chase Field in Arizona and show you what happened. Beginning with Trey Kennard, watch this vicious crash. He goes over the handlebars and then gets trapped underneath the bike. And it just went from bad to worse for Trey. He won't be here. Now, here's what happened to Jason Lawrence. This was in his heat race. He gets caught up in this mess, didn't make a transfer spot, so he had to go to the last chance qualifier. Things got even worse there. Watch the outside of your screen coming out of the corner. Down he goes. And Lawrence is out of the night. Doesn't make it into the main, doesn't score any points. But we had a chance to talk to Jason here this afternoon about what he thinks he needs to do. Yeah, I'm fired up to win the race tonight for sure, just because I need to now. I'm not in a position where I can get third and say, you know, that was good. I didn't lose many points. Now I need to gain points every race till the end of the season, and that's where I'm at again. And those are Jason's thoughts. Uh, Jeff, how about you? Jason Lawrence has to come out and start winning races. He has to dominate and win races. He needs the full 25 points. What that will do is it will apply the pressure to Weimer and Dungey, and hopefully those guys can crack. I'm not, I wouldn't count on that happening. Dungey definitely learned something, but that's what Lawrence has to do. He has to win races and apply the pressure. Well, let's take a look at the points. Remember, when we were here for Anaheim 1, Jake Weimer won that night. Ryan Dungey won at Phoenix. Weimer almost had that one won. Dungey now is the points leader by two over Jake Weimer. For more on Ryan Dungey, here's our own Aaron Bates. Just two races in, and Ryan Dungey is your current West Coast Lights point leader by a small margin of two points. He overcame adversity here at Anaheim 1, went on to win his very first victory of the season last weekend in Phoenix. First off, Ryan, congratulations to you on your victory last weekend. You've already shown consistency, something that you lacked in 2007 and 2008. What's made the difference so far this season? Well, uh, you know, it's still early. You know, we're still trying to be consistent. There's a lot of rounds left, and... Uh, we had a little adversity A1, like you said, but we overcame it and uh, came with the win in Phoenix, and we're here tonight feeling strong, and uh, hopefully get another one. It would be nice. Not only are you in a championship battle, but you also have a personal battle with your arch enemy, Jason Lawrence. What is it like knowing that last weekend he didn't qualify for the main event and he's sitting back in 10th place? Uh, you know, I don't really know much about what he... I don't really want to talk about it, but uh, at the end of the day, I knew it was a time I could make up some valuable points, and uh, I did everything I could that night, and 100%. Uh, so I overcame that, and uh, we're here tonight. Hopefully make some more points, but if not, we're going to give it a strong run. Ryan Dungey, the ball is in his court. The momentum is rolling, and he's hoping to pick up another victory, just as he did here at Anaheim 2 last year. 
Those are the storylines from a week ago and earlier this afternoon. Now that's all that's left to do is drop the gate and go racing. We'll do that when we come back to Angel Stadium of Anaheim. Back inside Angel Stadium, crowd settling in, getting ready for the first gate draft of the night. Let's take a look at our Supercross lights 411 as we get ready to go racing here. We're going to have two heat races. Top nine will go straight to the main as they always do. And then, of course, the last chance qualifier gives us the final two riders for our 20 rider gate. And they'll race for 15 laps here in round three of the eight race season. There you see the sign, heat one in the gate as we get ready to go racing here in Angel Stadium. And Jeff, the riders on the line should make this one pretty interesting because we get to see Jason Lawrence and Jake Weimer in this heat. And not only that, but they're right next to each other. There they are, the number one of Jason Lawrence, number 19, Jake Weimer. There's a 32nd board in our Honda starting lineup scrolling across the top of the screen. And actually, Weimer, and Reardon here were, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Lawrence and Weimer were the second and third fastest qualifier. Dungey, the fastest qualifier, we'll keep a lookout. He was a one minute point six. And uh, Jason Lawrence, second fastest qualifier with a 101.7. So Lawrence has to do something special here. So does Weimer. They have to prove that they can run on that one minute mark. Well, the first thing Lawrence has to do tonight is get into the main, which unfortunately he wasn't able to do last week. So here we go. There's a lane split right away. Right off the start, we have a lane split. This is just an incredible track that the builders have put together here. You see how tight the track is, how much it bottlenecks here right off the start. That can cause some serious problem in the main event when all the top guys get together and it's points time. That's Weimer and Dan Reardon. And no Lawrence at the front. Jason Lawrence not in the first few here. He's got to be top nine or better just to get a straight transfer to the main and not go to the last chance qualifier. Well, just in the back of your screen here, as we take a look at the two pro circuit Kawasaki riders blasting out to the front, as they have done this year, is Jason Lawrence mid to backpack. He is, Jeff, he is way, way back in the field. He is nowhere near a top nine position right now. Here's Lawrence. There you see him just going over that triple, and you can see he's got a lot of riders in front of him. He's just maybe inside the top 15. 20 riders on the gate. There's three riders, well now four, behind Lawrence. He has a lot of ground to make up. Our viewers will remember last week in Phoenix, it was a similar situation, situation to this, but I didn't see a, a lot of urgency out of Jason Lawrence to get up there. Tonight, there definitely is. Well, there should be. He's the reigning champ. He's got a lot to prove here. Meanwhile, up front, Weimer and his teammate running one and two. Morris right there and Reardon sitting in third. Reardon on that Geico Power Sports Honda, number 122. And remember at Anaheim 1, it was Reardon that grabbed a hole shot in the main event. Showed some serious speed there. We didn't see it at A2 because the start suffered, but Reardon can really lay down some hot laps right now. He is tailing the two fastest, strongest, most consistent riders of the season so far, minus Dungey. These riders have been very strong. So Reardon also putting on a very strong start here to Anaheim 2. Well, and the race leader, Jake Weimer, you know, Jeff, the amount of momentum that he has going for him right now is just amazing. He has been on fire, and if things had gone his way, and he not stumbled in that sand trap. And Morris, does, oh, sorry, Ralph, I'm gonna cut you off. Morris just did the rhythm section. We have not seen anyone except the Supercross riders triple, triple out of that at the end of their practice. Second lap, Morris comes out and nails one of the most technical rhythm sections I've seen in recent years. Gonna use that to his advantage. Unfortunately, he didn't gain him much ground, though, it doesn't look like. If he's close, okay, if well, he's close. But he didn't gain him much ground. 
Brandon is what I'm getting at. He didn't do it. He didn't separate himself as, as much as you would think he would have. This section, if if Morris can get close, oh, Reardon goes through the split. Can he make it up? No. If Morris is close to Weimer, I believe that doing that section is going to gain him a bike link or two. Plus, it puts you on the right-hand side. Unfortunately, Weimer is not close enough. Well, and getting back to Weimer, had he not stumbled in that sand pit at Phoenix, he would have Definitely. won the first two races of the 2009 season. Here it is. Season. Watch Morris. He triples over the tabletop, triples out. Now let's see where he's at. Really didn't close up as much as you'd think. No, I mean, it's wow. a big move, but it's not really gaining him much, either closing in on Weimer or losing rear. <laughs> it's... It's a spectacular, very oh, it's strong. It's, it's yeah. a risky jump, but yeah, there's no, there's no doubt about it. It's a strong move. Okay, we've seen Weimer here. He's out front once again. Weimer has a definite confidence, a definite edge this year. All three riders are riding the same pace. Yeah. The difference is Weimer is out front. There is, it's, there is so much work that goes into having that little bit of an edge, that little bit of confidence to where you're out front rather than just riding fast, okay? Right. I mean, all these riders are riding spectacular right now. I'm not gonna take that away from them, but Weimer knows and has the confidence to be out front this year. That's the difference from the last couple years till now. There's Lawrence on that number one. Oop, struggling with a tough block, watch this. Tough block out in the middle of the track. It comes flying out from the rider in front of him. Boy, things just oh. not going well for Jason Lawrence. He's still listed back in 12. That's two weeks in a row. He just can't buy a break. Well, <laughs> I'm going to go back to this, okay? Good starts make you luckier. If he was out front, that issue wouldn't have came into play. Last week at, at uh, Phoenix, if he had got the whole shot, there would have been no riders to crash Clearing into. Clearing the mess. Yeah, so, so that's why in Supercross, being a great starter is so important, and it makes you luckier. Jeff, two weeks in a row, our reigning West Coast champion, Jason Lawrence, could be looking at a trip to the last chance qualifier. He's only got about a lap and a half left to go here, and he needs three or four spots. Skinner, number 65, he holds the spot that Lawrence needs. I think he can do it, definitely. He's well, on those guys. We'll find out. Meanwhile, back to the front of the field, and Weimer clearing Weimer that big section that you were talking about, that rhythm section. And that's a confidence builder because in the second round of practice for Supercross, the top riders in the world developed that with only five minutes left, and these guys go out and do it in the race without practicing it. Lawrence, by the way, needs two more spots. He's moved himself up to 11th, and he's on the final lap here. Across the stripe, one to go for Jason Lawrence. He comes by a 10th. He needs Skinner. 65, here it is. And that should do it if he can hang on to the position. Meanwhile, we go back to the front. Here's Weimer working his way through, looking to pick up a heat race win here today. And how about it? Are Mitch Payton's two riders, are these guys dialed in here tonight? Jeff, he's wow. had three races, counting this one now here in 2009. If he can hang on for another half a lap, it'll be his third heat race victory out of three races so far this year. To go along with our main event win here at A1, Jake Weimer continues his winning ways. Oh, and Lawrence is down. He hasn't made it to the checkered flag yet. Is he going to hold on to take a transfer spot or not? Let's see. Working his way around the final few corners. It's not going to happen, I don't Ralph. think so, not Jeff. Not going to happen. Let's see what he can do here. Lawrence. Evans is across in seventh. Skinner, Skinner. Seeley, and Lawrence is going to the last chance qualifier. He missed it by two spots. Let's see what happened here. See right here, Lawrence jumps the outside and he cases that jump, then just clips Skinner's rear tire, tries to wrestle his Yamaha back down. Major, major mistake here. That just was, gets clipped. So unlucky for the reigning champion. That wow. was Michael LaPaglia on that 138. And now Jason Lawrence goes to the LCQ. Taking a look at the results, top nine goes straight to the main. So that's Jake Weimer down to Sean Skinner. Cole Seeley will join Jason Lawrence in the last chance qualifier. Here's Aaron.
Jake Weimer celebrates his third heat race win so far this season. Jake, last week in a tough break for you, but tonight's track, a very difficult one. You guys have made some sus suspension adjustments. How much did that help? It was big. You know, like you said, the track's a lot different tonight, and it's uh, it's really technical. So, you know, we uh, sat down trying to figure out what could make me more comfortable, and uh, I think we might have it. Jake Weimer, your winner, heat race number one. Well, Jake Weimer was fast enough already this year. Now, if he's even more comfortable, boy, he's going to be really tough to beat in the main event. Heat number two is coming up here on Speed, the home of the Supercross Lights Championship. This January, a bike scene like no other. Hang out with Jason for gravity defying stunts. Check out the latest riding gear designed for you. Superbike season premiere Tuesday, 9 Eastern, 10 Pacific, only on Speed. Well, let's show you the highlights now from heat number two, the Supercross Lights West Coast Championship. Well, heat number two is going to include number 10, Ryan Dungey. Our fastest qualifier. And points leader. Got to go around. around yeah. All around go fast guy. There he is. Michael Hall on the Yamaha with the hole shot. He goes to the right in the split. And he's got Dungey coming right after him on the 10. And the 31 is in that mix as well. Ryan Sipes. Dungey's in third. Let's see if Dungey can get the drive through the second one. He does not have the position. Can he square him up? Makes a good run off the corner. And that's going to do it. Dungey makes the move, drives past, and puts himself up into second. Ryan Dungey starting to apply the pressure to Ryan Sipes. If Sipes can hold on, this is just what Ryan Sipes need, that confidence booster to go out and beat the current points leader in this heat race. That is what Sipes needs to take that next step to improve his finish for the main event. This will be a huge boost if he can hang on. Lap and a half to go. And Ryan Sipes is going to win his first heat race of 2009. Results from heat number two show Ryan Sipes getting his first heat race victory of 2009. Ryan Clark take the last spot of the nine that are going on to the main event straight out of this heat. Let's go down to meet Ryan Sipes who's with our Aaron Bates. Well, Ryan Sipes did not buckle under the pressure of Ryan Dungey chasing right after him. Ryan, you had told me a little bit earlier this afternoon that you were working on your intensity and your aggression. Tonight you mean business. Yeah, you know, practice didn't even go very well for me, but I said, you know what, practice don't mean anything, you know, we, we still got a race, they still got to beat me, so I know it was fun, he was riding, I think he was a little quicker in a couple sections, but uh, it's a real tough track to pass on, so we held it on to it, it was good. First heat race of the season, Ryan Sipes, confident is soaring as he heads into the main event. Now he'll go get ready for the main event, which is coming up shortly here in Angel Stadium, he'll complete some more interviews on the victory podium and speed will be right back the official home of the supercross lights championship main event closing in I'm back to southern california the birthplace of supercross we're back to anaheim's angel stadium for the second of three visits here in 2009 on February 19th, Bull Run is back, and it's only on speed. Bill Goldberg is taking 12 teams on a little road trip across the Southwest. These teams will compete for over 200 grand in prizes for one wrong move, and the only roadside assistance they'll need is directions home. Bull Run with Bill Goldberg premieres February 19th exclusively on speed. Well, the last chance qualifiers where we got the final two riders for tonight's main. Let's take you back and show you the highlights in the LCQ. Lawrence with a good start. And boy, does he close down the inside there. Really gets on the binders hard. Grabs the preferred line. And the whole shot. Battle for the second position. Here they come, and that's going to change. And it's not going to stay that way. And contact is made. Lawrence is going to take the win in the transfer spot. Here he comes. He's going to the main. Is it going to be Sleater? It is. Let's take a look at the results from the last chance qualifier. Of course, the top two go. That's Jason Lawrence and Michael Sleater. Everybody else heads to the grandstands. Well, this week, our VIP pit pass is with our last chance qualifying winner, Jay Law, Jason Lawrence. Jason Lawrence. Defending Lights West Coast Supercross Champion. 
My favorite movie is Blow, my favorite food. I just like all kinds of Italian food, whatever. Spaghetti. My most embarrassing moment could have came here six days ago, seven days ago in Phoenix, I think. Might have been that. I'm the defending champion, and then I watched the race from the stand. I have no bad habits. <laughs> Probably the biggest misunderstanding about me has to be how serious I take my racing or how serious I don't take my racing like most people think it. I mean, this is my whole life, and I'm training just as much as anyone else that comes out here, so. I mean, it sucks, but it does make people think that I'm doing it all for all talent, which is not the case. No final words. That's my final words. And there is Jason Lawrence in the main event tonight. Won the last chance qualifier. Hey, here's our Toyota moving forward schedule. Of course, you can see all of the Supercross Lights races right here on Speed, the home of the Supercross Lights Championship. We're on to Houston, San Francisco, back here to Anaheim, and then Qualcomm Stadium down in San Diego. That'll be a great one. If you want to join us live and in person for any of these great events, check out supercrossonline.com and order up your tickets and come on out and check out the races live and in person. Well, that's what everybody's shooting for, the Monster Energy finish line. Will it be Ryan Dungy, Jason Lawrence, or Jake Weimer? Anaheim, California, the lights are on bright, and they're all focusing on the 20 riders in the gate for tonight's main event. Getting ready to go. There's a look at the big crowd on hand here tonight. We're gonna have 20 riders for 15 laps. Weimer and Sipes, the two heat winners already tonight. Jason Lawrence picking up the last chance qualifier. Before we get this one underway, let's go to Aaron Bates for a progressive pre-race report. Defending West Coast Lights champion Jason Lawrence is fired up, to say the least. Two weeks in a row now, he's found himself lined up at the LCQ, and he said this time he's got to try to make it a little bit easier on himself. When I asked him why he looked like such a sad little puppy dog lined up at the line, he said he wanted to cry. He said he couldn't believe that he found himself in the same position that he had last weekend. Good luck to Jason Lawrence. He said he's been practicing on those starts. We'll see if it pays off. Well, as you can see, Jason Lawrence is lined up second gate from the outside. Let's see, let's see if he can grab this whole shot. This is a nice long straightaway. This is Lawrence way over here. Jeff, there's our Honda starting grid scrolling across the top of the screen. And there's a good look at the starting field focusing on the gate. shot gonna come from it looked like it might be the 116 of Ryan Morris but Dungey was right there as well Lawrence came pretty far up from the outside but he's been trapped back in the pack a little bit so Dungey sits in third Reardon's in second and Morris your leader and there's Jake Weimer the 19 on the Kawasaki setting in fourth he made the mistake last week with the lead but now it's all about the Kawasaki Ryan of Ryan Ryan Morris out front and this we, is what he hasn't had was a whole shot. He's been as fast as any rider out there. Now he has the track position on what has been labeled a track that's hard to pass on in this one line. He has been right there in each of the last two weeks, showing plenty of speed on that monster pro circuit Kawasaki. Second place, Dan Reardon, Geico Honda. He has been flying tonight also. Could this be the night that Reardon gets up there onto the top spot of the podium? And then, of course, Dungey on the Rockstar Makita Suzuki, number 10. Dungey goes left in the split. Over the big wall. Mm, it's just not fast when you go to the left. It's about a bike link short, you know. Oh, there he is to the inside. And it's going to pay off there. It might not have been fast through the wall, but he's able to make up for it there, and he takes second away as he moves in front of rear. Lawrence, by the way, is back in eighth place. Jake Weimer, 19, setting in fourth. He sees Ryan, that Ryan Dungey has made the pass on Reardon. Weimer needs to explode right now. He needs to get by Reardon and hang on to the back of Dungey. We've seen that Dungey can really lay down some hot laps here tonight. Good look at Weimer, who looked good in his heat race as well. Showed plenty of speed there. And it is so important to really get your heart rate up and just start feeling it here. 
You can see there's some slick spots on the track. And this is really, Jeff, I gotta say, the first time all year that we've seen Jake Weimer maybe just a little off the groove of the flow of the event. I mean, he came out smoking in his heat race, won that, he's been strong each and every round so far. Just doesn't look like he's found his rhythm yet here in the main. Well, it really has to do with track position. Weimer looks great, but he started fourth, okay? You look great when you're out front with the whole shot. <laughs> Well, this is that section there where Dungey's doing it a little bit differently. Oh, he comes up short. He makes a mistake. Oh, yes, Where's he Reardon? did. Reardon not able to capitalize, and Dungey gets very lucky. But Reardon did close up. Now we've got the top four riders, Supercross, Lights, West Coast Division, all four riders wheel to wheel, only three laps down. Of course, a lot of people thought maybe Dungey would win that. West Coast Championship last year, and it slipped through his fingers, and it went to Jason Lawrence instead. Dungey came back and was exceptionally fast at the East-West Shootout in Las Vegas at Sam Boyd Stadium, which we'll be doing again in May that first weekend. Here's Dungey trying to make up some ground on Morris once again as they come to the wall. And just at the top of your screen, joining this fight, Chris Blos and then Jason Lawrence in sixth, Blos, Blos in fifth. This could be a six-way battle for the lead here if this tightens up. Lawrence has got to fight his way in if he wants a shot in the championship. Dungy closing in on Morris. Ever so close now. Right up along the tough blocks and over the finish line jump. The gap is less than a second. And Ralph, how impressive has Ryan Morris been this season and especially this main event? Totally held his composure. Ryan Dungey is applying the pressure lap after lap, but Morris has not made a mistake. Ryan Dungey sets in the position where he can start to move around, try to find some new lines here. Here he Here's is. Dungey up the inside, right alongside of him, bar to bar. And it's Morris that makes the breaking move into turn one. Here they come to the wall, and Morris still holds on to the spot. Boy, that outside lane has just not been the key ticket. But, you know, Jeff, if you want to take over the lead, sometimes you got to just go in the different direction. you got to make it happen. And this track is shaping up. Here it is. Dungey to the left or the right, excuse me. The wall's not the spot. The rhythm Whoa. section could be. Dungey right alongside, makes the move and takes the lead. And you talk about threading the needle. That is such a difficult section. And Weimer has gotten around Reardon. So the Pro Circuit Kawasaki guys now are second and third. Reardon goes to fourth. And look at Blos on the 63. He sits there in fifth and striking position on that Troy Lee Designs back Honda. He has been really good the last two weeks. And you know his team owner, Troy Lee, just <laughs> he out of Corona, California here local, he has to be jumping up and down at the performance here of his rider. Well, Troy Lee has always been very fast on a numerous amount of riders with his designs, and now it's great to see his team up there as well. Yeah, well, Troy, just such a fan of the sport, so dedicated to Supercross and motocross racing. And an icon in the industry. He definitely is, and he's quite a character on top of that. <laughs> no doubt about it. Jake Weimer putting his name up to the front of the industry as well, and he's been taking that number 19 to, to the top step of the podium this season already looking to do it again as we watch Blos on that 63 closing in on Reardon. Blos Reardon. to the outside. Look how difficult that section is. There's two very defined lines now. In practice, it was a little bit undefined. Now there's two grooves. Which line can you make work? They're both coming out pretty easy here. Coming across the start straight. See that's those those spots right there, the riders really losing traction in the rear tire and then sliding into the first turn. Both riders going to the right through the split. So Blos just trying to be very patient here, but really following closely right on the lot, right on the rear tire of Reardon. Well, just waiting for just the smallest of mistakes to be made by Reardon. And Blos is ready to pounce. Reardon, a former Australian Supercross Lights champion, a two-time champion down there in 2006 and 2007. Finished seventh on the West Coast Championship last year, did Reardon. And just at the top of your screen there, 
on that monster Yamaha. Reigning champion Jason Lawrence, he sat back here behind Blos and reared him for a few laps, and he really hasn't made up much ground. If Lawrence is going to get up to the podium, we're at the halfway point. He's really going to have to throw it down. Yeah, he's sitting in six, and he's got a long climb ahead of him. And I mean, throw it down in a different way that's happened in the last <laughs> last couple of motos for him. He's going to have to lay down some hot laps here and be very aggressive, which we know Jason can be. But this track here in the main event is very one line. Look at Blows just following so tightly on the rear tire of Reardon. Well, and here he is to the inside. And if Lawrence can get in there and mix it up with these guys, he that makes might the pass. really change things up as Blos comes by to pick up the spot. Here comes Lawrence. He gets reared in, and now he closes in quickly on Blos. So Lawrence is back in the game all of a sudden. He crosses the finish line jump and finds himself in fifth. He needs points, Jeff, and a spot on the podium tonight would be just what the doctor ordered for Lawrence, and it's a shot for the championship. Lawrence, 10 seconds behind our leader. He's uh, about five seconds behind, or Blos and Lawrence right there working together. They're about five seconds behind Weimer, who's stabilized in third. Morris still in second. Dungy out front by a couple seconds. So Lawrence goes to work on the back of the number 63 of Blos. Lawrence on the number one, Boost Mobile, back entry trying to come up to the inside. And we're gonna step away to take a quick break here on Speed. Here at Angel Stadium for fourth position, Jason Lawrence flies past Chris Blows and moves himself and his number one plate up into fourth spot. Ryan Dungey continues to lead. Ryan Morris is second, Jake Weimer third, and Lawrence, a preseason favorite to contend for the title, now sails through the night sky, sitting in fourth. Now Jason Lawrence has a clear track. He has about six seconds to make up on Weimer. You see him pulling some tear-offs. Let's see how he got that fourth position, Jeff. Makes a move here. This is that difficult rhythm section. He does the triple over the tabletop and the triple in. Carries just a little more speed, and it's worth about two bike links. Take a look here, he just flies. See how Blos lands on top and hops off, doubles in the corner. Lawrence makes a triple, triple out of that. Now, let's see what he can do, what sort of damage he can do, and if he can erode that lead that Weimer has over him. Lawrence finally looks like he's finding his groove. At the stripe, that last lap across, he was a one minute, point eight, se or, uh, point eight tenths of a second. Our leader, Dungy. Well, and here's a Leader battle Dungy's between flying also. teammates over second place, Morris and Weimer. Morris has the position. Weimer sitting in third in the 19. And it's interesting, I spoke to some of the folks at Kawasaki earlier today, and these two riders, Jeff, were not supposed to be the A-list riders on the West Coast Championship. They actually thought that these two guys would support Stroop and Purcell and split them up between the East and the West. But Purcell and Stroop not able and ready to go when the West Championship dropped the gate. So these two guys got moved up to become the A team here on the West. And boy, have they delivered. They definitely have put in some phenomenal rides. You can tell these riders spend a lot of time together out at the Kawasaki test track, burning off laps here. They're both putting together a solid ride here, but unfortunately, Dungy's out front by five seconds. Speaking of Dungy, there's number 10 on the Rockstar Makita Suzuki. Look at Dungy with this start. Then he really gets on the brakes hard. See, he almost loses the front wheel and just nips it. That's a look at our progressive whole shot replay. He almost had the whole shot, Dungy, but instead it went to the 116 of Ryan Morris. Boy, Aaron, I gotta tell you, Ryan Morris is really putting together a strong run here in second place. He really is a consistent ride for Ryan Morris, for sure. His mechanic had just put down, breathe, loose hands, trying to remind him not to tighten up. Last weekend, if you remember, he was struggling. He said he was riding really tight. That's something that he was trying to remind him of. Loosen up and race your own race. Well, that's, the, that's something that I always like for my mechanic to put on the pit board is to breathe. It seems very simple, but to be conscious of it with those words, and when you hit these finish line jumps like this, or you hit the triple jumps, 
That's when you take the deep breath. You let go of the bars and actually stretch your hands out because in Supercross, it's your forearms and your grip. They talk about arm pump. That's your forearms pumping up from holding onto the bars so tight. The key to that, looking ahead, breathing, taking that deep breath, and letting loose of the bars. And it's, a, it's something that you practice and you have to be conscious of each and every time you get on the bike. Morris ran in the East Coast region last year, had a podium at Detroit. Now we've got some lapped riders, Ralph. Here we go. And that can make a difference as we work our way through this one. Morris switching brands, rode for Yamaha last year, finds himself in the big green Kawasaki this season. Uh-oh. And that hurt the number 19 of Weimer. He got trapped in that traffic, and Morris clears it, and Weimer's still stuck there dealing with it. Look at that. Boy, that has absolutely ruined Jake Weimer's chances of making a move on Morris anytime soon. Yeah, and that's uh, Sean Skinner and Mike LaPaglia. They're battling for 18th and 19th. And look at the gap now, that how much space there is in between the you see the 116 blue of Morris and then the 19th. He still hasn't got past Skinner. Yeah. Skinner getting the blue cross flag. That's a blue move over flag. And, and you can way. see Weimer looking over at him like, hey, I'll help the buddy out here. Yeah, he's uh, he's got to be pretty disappointed in that because that lap was just horrible for uh, Jake Weimer as he turns a 102.6 and Morris a 101.1. So that's a second and a half just in that lap when they were wheel to wheel. And seeing, seeing that we have three laps to go, that's going to give Morris that cushion that he needs to really come to be comfortable in the, in the final laps. And it's that's going to be uh, deflating to Jake Weimer. Jake Weimer wins here at Anaheim 1, finishes fourth at Phoenix. Oh, I had Phoenix won if it wasn't a light lap crash in the sand. And now he's going to finish third at Anaheim 2. A great season for him, and he's definitely going to be in contention for this championship. Yeah, and you can see Weimer's riding style as he went through those moguls and all that. He's just totally off his line here. He's got to be so frustrated inside that helmet knowing that he was close to second, but now it's really drifted away. Jeff Alessi on the 801, brother of Michael Alessi, Battling it out here with uh, Ryan Sipes. No, it's not Sipes. That's I thought McCrumman, it was be Sipes. yeah, Eric McCrumman. It's Eric McCrumman on the 410. There's Ryan Sipes. We're taking a look at him, number 31, he setting at 11, just outside of the top 10. And Jeff, he had a very good heat race, and now he finds himself buried here in the main event well we were i mean we were saying that that he race win that's what's good, what it's going to take to to build his confidence here for tonight but obviously he did not get the start that he needed well this guy did and he's pointing to the crowd syndicating he's number one and he's only got one lap left to go and ryan dungy giving the number one to his mechanics as well as he passes the mechanics area the rock star makita suzuki rider Boy, is he off on a tear now. Jeff found his rhythm for sure. Here at Anaheim 1, he was third, takes the win at Phoenix, and now he's looking for his second win in a row. Well, and, and, and you got to wonder here, at this point last year, we were saying the same thing. Ryan Dungey has found his groove, and then Jason Lawrence started winning, and then Dungey, you know, he really fell apart, but you got to think, right now he is mentally strong, as he heads for the checkered flag. Checkered flag awaits. Ryan Dungy taking the win at Anaheim 2. What a solid ride. He is happy with the fist pump. He is loving life. And where is the reigning West Coast champ? Here he comes. Jason Lawrence is going to follow Morris and Weimer across the line. And he's going to finish fourth here tonight which is a huge turnaround considering a week ago in Phoenix, he didn't even make the main event. Well, that was a very strong ride for Jason Lawrence. You take a look at Ryan Dungey, two hands in the air, victorious. His nemesis, Lawrence, though, he could have hit bottom. Now he's rebounded up for a fourth place. This is going to be a fantastic series as we go down to the final. Well, Dungey will extend his points lead as he talks to his mechanic, and Lawrence, who came in 10th in the points, will move a little deeper up into the chase for the title. We'll be back. Just literally right behind the starting gate. Of course, we're here at Angel Stadium. 
One of the highlight spots of a visit here. Here's the results from the main event. Dungey picks up his second win of the year. Morris and Weimer once again, right on pace. You gotta figure Morris is gonna squeeze one out here sooner than later. Take a win. Let's go down to Aaron. Jake Weimer looking less than impressed with his performance tonight. Jake, you were kind of struggling with this track all day long. How happy are you to have this evening over with? Yeah, I mean, it's good to come out of here, you know, on the podium and, you know, salvaging the most points I can. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I never really felt real, real comfortable all day. The tracks, it's a lot different than what we're used to. And uh, I struggled a little bit. And, uh, you know, I, I can't take anything away from either Ryan. They both rode really well. And uh, here I am in third. I just got to thank my team, Monster Energy, Pro Circuit, Kawasaki, Parts Unlimited, Thor. Everybody, thank you so much. Lappers kind of got in your way this evening. How much did that set you back? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely, you know, messed me up a little bit. I was right there on Ryan Morris and uh, got into some lappers and definitely lost some time. But uh, everybody's got to deal with it, and it is what it is. And uh, I was the third best guy tonight. Weekend off, regroup. Great to see you back. Thanks. Well, one of the highlights of the season is going to Las Vegas for the finale. That's all what we're about, the road to Vegas. Begins here in Anaheim in January. We finish up at Sam Boyd Stadium in May. It'll be the site of the East-West Shootout for the Lights Riders. Of course, that is not a points race. Championships will be decided. The West Coast guys, right now, everybody's chasing Ryan Dungey. He's got a six-point lead over Morris. One more marker back is Jake Weimer. We go back to the victory podium. Here's Aaron. Ryan Morris picked up right where he left off here at Anaheim 1. Ryan, tonight, a very consistent ride, very impressive. You rode like you're loosened up a little bit. You feel a little bit better? Yeah, I feel pretty good, uh, considering I haven't rode since Phoenix. I've been really sick all week, and uh, so it was uh, <coughs> a little nerve-wracking coming here, not riding since the main event last week, and uh, I ripped my first hole shot I've ever got, so I was super excited and just rode as hard as I could, as long as I could, and. Uh, it worked out. I'm so happy to be up here every weekend. Um, you know, my Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki team is just amazing, and they do so much for me. I can't thank those guys enough. They've, uh, you know, gave me a second chance for my career, and it's been awesome so far, and I just can't thank those guys enough down there. Congratulations on a great performance. Get the latest Supercross news results, videos, and commentary on the web or on your phone, only on SpeedTV.com and Speed Mobile. Let's head back to the victory podium. Here's Aaron with our race winner. Ryan Dungy extends his point lead once again. Ryan, you've got a weekend coming off. What do you do now to keep yourself to stay out on top? Uh, you know, just uh, probably take these two weeks and enjoy, but uh, work on the stuff we need to. I think uh, felt great tonight, but uh, I think we can. There's room for improvement, and uh, hey, uh, San Francisco, looking forward to it. How tough was tonight's track? Uh, it was just really like tight, you know, hard to pass, and. Uh, I was behind Morris and we were having a good battle going, but uh, I was able to get around him and lay the wood, you know, have a good time. And uh, I really feel that uh, I really enjoy it. It was fun. Two victories in a row for Ryan Dungey. The momentum continues. Well, Aaron mentioned the week off. That's because we're going to Houston next, Reliance Stadium. That's where the East Coast Lights guys will open up their season. You'll see that show here on Speed, Sunday, January 25th. 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And of course, uh, we'll get back to the action with the West Coast guys when we get up to uh, San Francisco, Jeff, but we get the East Coast next, and Dungey gets a break and a comfortable lead. And we're uh, praying for no rain up in San Fran, <laughs> too, remember. I guess it depends on who you are. Some guys like the muddy track. Well, for Aaron Bates and Jeff Emig, I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long from Angel Stadium in Anaheim, and congratulations to Ryan Dungey on his second victory of 2009. So long.